welcome to Field Sports Britain, coming to you this week from Germany. Coming up, we're in Scotland looking at one of the wonders of the natural world, the grey geese, and how shooting is helping them. First, I'm outside Berlin with hunters from all over the world, and we're shooting driven sheep. The mouflon is one of the most popular quarry animals in Europe. It was once an important sporting quarry for British big game hunters. My great-grandfather took my great-grandmother mouflon shooting in Sardinia for their honeymoon. They knew how to give a girl a good time in those days. Well, we start the trip at an old military range outside Berlin, where Zeiss have brought nearly a hundred gun shop owners from around the world, from as far away as Australia, United States, France, Scandinavia, Austria, not Libya. And they are going to shoot a variety of different targets, beginning with something you're more likely to see at a children's party. The range day is a chance for Zeiss to show off its range of rifle scopes. It gives the local forestry department a strong sense of relief that we can shoot straight, and it allows us to find out which is the top shooting nation. David Trail runs the gun and fishing tackle shop Graham's of Inverness. Have you done ball shooting before? Never. Never shot anything that... Never, never anything driven. My entire shooting experience is either wing shooting or uh, or just stalking, <laughs> general British stalking. This is entirely new and it's uh, it's not particularly easy either. <laughs> um, what was, out of all the targets you tried today, what, what was a really tricky one? Um, I, th I think anything um, when you're standing completely unsupported because it goes against oh, all, all you know, we would only take that type of shot in, in, in Scotland at a, a, a wounded animal, for example. You know, you, you wouldn't purposely go out and stand up like a cowboy and shoot things. So, um, so anything when I was doing that, I found quite challenging. <laughs> and that, a lot of people found that the prone shot on the, the fox quite difficult. Yeah, no, right? that, that was actually. Um, it's interesting to, to come and see the way these guys shoot. Um, because they're using skills that we've maybe written out of our, our shooting vocabulary because we have bipods and, you know, because we shoot from, you know, in, in, in woodland shooting, for example, shooting from sticks. Um, there's these, these guys uh, that are doing this all the time, that they're, they're shooting, you know, better honed than ours at it, you know. Uh, you come to places like, like Germany and these facilities are dotted all over the country. It just gives you an indication of the entirely different culture of shooting that they have here and it's, uh, it's fascinating to come and be a part of it. You know? We shoot yeah. boar running right to left as well as static fox, rodeo targets and balloons. The one everyone likes best is the big male wild boar, the Kyla, coming at you. The white boar comes closer on you and you have three shots which you have to place on the white boar until the light goes up. Then we try a variation. Start with your cartridge clip on the table and your hands in your pockets. Much trickier. <laughs> we found, however, that the running targets are easier than you might think. The target that produces the biggest problem for shooters is the prone shot at the fox. And now the winner of Most Accurate Nation. The top three shots are in reverse order from Denmark. Iceland and Norway. Of course, I, I heard that the British uh, shot not so good. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you yeah, mean? yeah, but you can shoot. You can, can shoot for shit. We can I, shoot. Look, look. I, I, I heard. That, have you heard that all the British are actually going to go with the dogs today? They are beaters, and now this is uh, what they need. The British army is yeah. here, especially for you. To support, no, yeah. to support the British. <laughs> Team GB has some catching up to do. We are shooting on a huge military training area outside Berlin. Zeiss is renting it from the German government. British breasts swell with pride. A regiment of our engineers are training on one part of the area today. We hope they will push game over to our part. And the German capital, not far away and looks undefended. Mrs Merkel would be surprised. Back to the sheep. Many British shooters do not like the idea of shooting running animals. It might be Halloween, but aiming at big game on the hoof is not the horror story that they believe. For one thing, a day in a 10,000 acre forest with 90 dodgy foreigners armed with rifles needs meticulous planning and a full morning's worth of lessons about what you can and cannot shoot. Be aware, don't shoot a running stack. Wait until he stands to be very sure there's only one crow, okay? Verstehen? 
Find out what happens later in the programme. Now from the dark forests of Germany to David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Britain News. As the fox hunting season gets underway, opening meets across the country attract record numbers of supporters. Hunts maintain they keep to the letter of the law and figures released by the Ministry of Justice show that there was only one conviction for hunting last year by an individual connected with a registered hunt. 97% of convictions since the Hunting Act came into force relate to poaching, including at least seven people who've been convicted of hunting rats. Talking of poachers, the West Country's red stags are in the crosshairs of public attention again this week. Illegal shooters on Exmoor shot a 19-point stag dubbed the Goodly Giant. This beats the medium-sized Exmoor Emperor by five points. They wounded it, hitting it two or three times in the back, and it later died. Its carcass was found by a local vet. Shooting enthusiasts immediately condemned the actions of the poachers. Now, bad news for pheasant fanciers. The World Pheasant Association, which is supported by shooting interests, reports that the Edwards pheasant may now be extinct in the wild. The species is only found in the lowland forests of central Vietnam, where habitat loss has had a heavy impact. Matthew Granger of the WPA explains why the bird has gone. It's a lowland forest specialist, and a lot of the lowland forest in Vietnam has been um, destroyed. Um, it's been converted for agriculture and for um, mainly rice paddies. You're now up to date with Field Sports Britain News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Back to Charlie in Germany. The morning of the hunt dawns and some of the shooters here do not know what to expect. Everyone knows that hunting practices vary widely around the world. Jim McLean has a gun shop in the deep south of the United States. Surely he has been on a day as big as this. Would you do a gator hunt like this? Would you have this many people out for that sort of thing? Oh, wear a flak vest and be very careful. <laughs> now, before you are tempted to go and shoot some Suffolks in a field, know that mouflon have more in common with gazelle than the average lamb chop. With a top speed of 40 miles an hour, they are as fast as a pheasant. Mark Kahn, who runs Zeiss Sports Optics in the UK, is on a stand out in the open. He could be taking some long shots on any game that comes out. Guns start booming around us, but there is nothing heading our way. Big bag driven pheasant this ain't. Well, we've heard, we've heard some going off over there, so they've certainly driven something out, but at the moment it's, uh, it's fairly quiet here. At last, our luck changes. There's a mouflon that, that just come out of there, but uh, unsuccessful. <laughs> it's the first thing we've seen all, all morning. So, uh, ah, yeah, we'll, we'll see what we get now. But it, uh, uh, it's, it's on the move and we should have still got it. Should have still got it. Don't beat yourself up. No. <laughs> you tell that the poor guy up there still isn't shooting. <laughs> As the clock strikes one, Mark unloads and climbs down. He wants to make sure he definitely missed with that first shot. He did miss. There is no sign of blood. As we wait for the Land Rover, three red deer come trotting out of the wood to add insult to the lack of injury Mark has inflicted. They see us and leg it. In the Land Rover trailer are a whole flock of mouflon. Using a double barreled over and under, one of the guns shot five of them in under a minute. Two of the sheep have good heads, which will cost that gun thousands of euros in trophy fees. Our driver euros. thinks that's hilarious. <laughs> that is that what he spent? He spent 4,000 euros with, with five shots. Whoa. In one minute! In one minute! Yeah. Congratulations! And this is all going to go to Greece. Bitte? All the money goes to Greece. <laughs> I've shot it some years before. I've shot it um, a deer, a big deer. Miner. Yeah. 
And I have thought, oh, now I must take my Harley Davidson <laughs> and change it. For the big deer. Yes, yes. exactly. That's it. So which of the guns was it? It could only be the Norwegian Stuller. You heard me? Did, did you hear my... I have not heard. What happened? Yeah, but you heard, uh, <laughs> you heard the shots. I, I think I shot four small foxes or something. Did you? Yeah, yeah, or five? Yeah, 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 yeah. Or Mufflon. Yeah, I don't know. Are you proud of what you've done? No, actually. I'm uh, now actually a little bit depressed. Because uh, you know how it is. I have to make the speech uh, tonight again. As normal. So I'm a little bored about uh, getting king of the hunt. So tomorrow I will go with the beaters. This is an ordinary day's hunting for a Norwegian, but what do Australians think about it? It's a very disciplined uh, approach to hunting they have. In um, Australia? No, here. Here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. highly respectful, They're very cautious. Um, yeah, they take it seriously, it's good to see. Yeah. yeah. And, and good hunting, um, good hunting and management practices certainly very, very good as well. Yeah. So yeah, we're impressed. More sheep in a minute. Next, we have a new series. The director of shooting at the Countryside Alliance, David Taylor, is off to see the great wildlife events of Great Britain and find out how shooting sports keeps them happening. It's Taylor's Travels. That's an awful lot of swans. I'm in Easter Ross, east of Inverness, next stop Norway. This place is an absolute haven for wildlife. This morning I went out with a local goose guide. If you want to turn a large skein of geese and bring them over guns, you need to know how to speak goose. Just blow it very gently. If you blow it too hard it makes a distress call and just flare off. Or if you have pinks coming in, you sound just... It's more like a chattery call. And what is the distress call? What if, if you heard them making it? The, the sea's just over on the other side, I believe. We've got the wind coming into us this way. So we're laying the decoys out and head to wind that way. Because he is a farmer, James is well placed to watch the geese here. He observes to conserve and has strict rules for his shooters. There's, there are less geese coming in here. I mean, farming practices have changed. I mean, a year, 20 years ago, there was a lot of spring barley grown here. Now there's a lot of oilseed rape, winter wheat, winter oats. So they've less doubles to go on, but uh, we still get a fair number in. I mean, 20 years ago, we maybe had 40,000 on the law. Now it's maybe 10 or 15. It varies from year to year. You're very careful about bags and things like we that. We shoot too. a brace per gun and we stop. It's as simple as that. A lot of people go a lot further than that, don't they? Not necessarily good thing. No, that's their choice, but I don't approve of that. The arrival of the grey geese in autumn is one of the great British wildlife events. Hundreds of thousands of birds travel thousands of miles from their breeding grounds in the subarctic. They will stay here until around May. Around here, they don't really cause much of a problem for the farmers until the spring drillings. But for local tourism during the shooting season, they can be a real boon. Many people travel much further than the birds to get here to come shooting. There's something sort of wild and, and natural about geese, which is a huge attraction, especially to some of the French people. And it's uh, the, the beauty and, and the, the unspoilt areas they get to shoot in. They're, they're well away from, from industrial areas and all the rest of it, and it's just, just a very beautiful place to be. You had a good morning, didn't you? <laughs> very good indeed, thanks, yeah. <laughs> It was indeed. And we, that was all part of the magic, seeing those geese? Yeah, it's seen the volume of geese and, and the fact that, you know, you get your shot, you've always got a good chance of getting a shot, no guarantees, uh, and, you know, have your few and then leave them alone. Yeah, they're there for again. And does everyone go away satisfied? Pretty much so, yeah. Pretty much so. Back at the field, it has been over an hour and not much has come over. Then our luck changes. Just as we begin packing up, the geese and hooper swans start moving. Very exciting. We've had quite a few flying over, uh, some of them very high, and quite a few of them over in the field behind us. Lots of swans as well. It's, uh, lots of action, but nothing. No shoot up. A couple of shots down over there, but uh, not much over here. So. When it begins to quieten down, James drives up and suggests we go back to Loch Eye, where the birds overnight. At the loch, we see geese lift from the surrounding stubble. All that goes over are us 
is a wedge of swans. I prefer a pageant of swans. It's been an amazing morning. It seems like a long way away from the dry corridors of Westminster where I spend my time as the director of shooting for the Countryside Alliance, trying to convince MPs that lead isn't the devil's work. Goose shooting is an incredibly accessible sport and every shooter should try it. For more information on Lackey's guiding services, email him at ls at highlandsporting.com. For more information on the Countryside Alliance's shooting campaign, visit us at www.countryside-alliance.org.uk. Well, it's the start of day two and I won't be needing these. I'm abandoning my British friends today and joining a German to see how they do driven game. Up he goes onto his stand, sits, waits, waits and waits. German or not, we draw another blank. The distant booms indicate this is a bigger day, not for us, but at least Stefan has a prettier gun. This is a gun that was um, manufactured in Fellach, one of the most famous um, places where you find guns missing in Austria. You have two barrels of an under, caliber is 9.3 by 74R and it's a very lightweight very slim and very beautiful little gun and as you can see also the engravings the locking system similar to the ones from shotguns but it's a double action or over and under rifle just a little beauty david trail has more luck so what does he think of shooting moving game Reticent, just. But again, I think because you know I don't have a skill set which enables me to be confident in doing it. Um, but uh, he wasn't far away. Um, he was pausing, presented his neck quite nicely. <laughs> Bad luck for him and good luck for me. Everything, everything worked out very well. So uh, that that was okay. But but yeah, I mean, you know, had he been had he been a bigger boy, um, and moving at speed with a group, would I have felt so confident? Maybe not. One of the joys of this hunt is meeting so many nationalities, not just Scottish, and talking to them about sport in their countries. I want to talk to you particularly because uh, you're from Iceland and uh, you have all our geese. Yes, we keep them from the spring till the autumn and we feed them carefully, shoot a few of them and send them back to you. You don't, you shoot them to pieces, we know you do. No, no, we don't shoot so many. It's, it's about 3,000 uh, hunters that go out and totally we shoot something like 40,000 geese in Iceland. So you still have about 150,000 left. So do you get cross with the British for shooting all your geese coming back? No, no. No, you know, the population of the geese is growing every year. Uh, the number of hunters is also growing, but much more slower. So we cannot see any problem. We can mix this uh, population between us and without any problems. And then there are the Americans, and one of them is a TV star. I suppose maybe you hunt all over the world for your TV show, Headhunter Chronicles. What was this outing like? Uh, I, I enjoyed this type of hunting just because it's a tradition. So you get to come to, you know, basically come to Europe, come to Germany, stuff like that. You see the uh, hunting heritage that's, you know, probably thousands of years old, you know. Um, we have a hunting heritage in the U.S. that's only a few hundred years old. So just really need to see the culture, see the people, and, and bottom line is it's a tradition all over the world. Do you think this kind of thing will be a hit on your TV show? Yeah, I think people are definitely interested in watching that kind of stuff. You shot one yesterday. What was that like? Yeah, it was fun. We, we ended up shooting uh, three different mouflon, one ram, and actually two rams and one female, so and at different ranges, and some of them were driven and some stopped, so it makes it difficult, you know. The running ones, and you can't really judge them, and so it's definitely a fun hunt, you know, and you get to see the dogs and stuff like that, so. Right, you are an American TV personality, therefore you must give us a plug for your TV show. What is it and when is it on? Um, we're on the Pursuit Channel every Friday night at 8 o'clock, and it's Headhunter Chronicles. The final tally is 80 head of game over two days and nothing wounded that wasn't followed, dispatched and brought back. British shoot owners watching this may wonder at how Zeiss arranged for nearly 100 shooters and their rifles to come here. Ralph Neighbour is our host and he explains. So you have to start six months in advance to find the right location. Um, you have to start six months in advance to organize the hunting license. That's the most difficult thing because in Germany it's quite difficult to get the hunting license. 
And there we have a cooperation with the um, forest and hunting department and they did a very good job. Germany takes the safety side of it very, very seriously indeed. The, the, that seemed to be most impressive because in the UK we, we turn up with some guns, you know, we, we are put out on our pegs. We're told not to shoot each other, but it's, it's more than that in Germany, isn't it? It is, it is. Because um, the way we do our driven hunt, um, we have also dogs and um, drivers in the hunt sometimes also um, people with a rifle and um, the hunters are positioned on high seats and as he has a plenty he has plenty of game you take a, i think we have counted um, in these two days 120 shots so safety is very very important and the ground sometimes is very hard you have stony ground and then it could happen easily that the bullet drops off and hits somebody what uh, benefit is this apart from giving the gun shop owners a good time mm -hmm. so the benefit for us um, the dealers we did invite, these are our best dealers worldwide and um, it's a kind of incentive to say thank you to them and also to share um, a joint passion of hunting um, to build a network, a very strong network and you know in our industry um, it's a very small industry, a relationship is everything and um, this close relationship with these dealers that will strengthen our business no doubt and you have seen the event was very very successful, everybody was happy and I promise you, they will never forget their shoulder mount hanging on the wall. They will always remember that event. Yeah. Will, were they all using Zeiss scopes? Yes. <laughs> That's good. At least I didn't see anybody who did not. <laughs> Very tactful of them. <laughs> yes. Well, this has been Field Sports Britain sorting out the sheep from the chaff as we do every week. We're back next week. And if you haven't done so already and you're watching us on YouTube, please click the subscribe button, which is just out there somewhere. Or go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, scroll down to the bottom and pop your email address into our constant contact box and we will constantly contact you about our programme. Or click to like us on Facebook, same place, or follow us on Twitter and you will get news of our programme every week until the 22nd century.